Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to use Discord. But first of all, what is Discord? It is a messaging platform for people to communicate with each other. Some even consider it social media. You can send messages to one person, one to one, or multiple people. You can even do video calls. There are these groups called direct message groups, where it's you and your group of people, or one to one called a direct message, or private message, also known as PM. To just summarize all of this, it's basically Skype, but better with group, with more group features. Now why Discord? It's a great opportunity to have an interactive online environment with your students. You can screen share your work or you use the camera to also show your work. You could put announcements in a separate chat where students can only read it. But maybe you're not a professor, but you're just someone who, who just wants to know how to use Discord. Like to get around. Or well, maybe more than that, but anyways. First of all, when you do try to make a Discord account, you would just need a email account and password. Then you verify there through an email that you may receive. Once you got have gotten started in Discord, you're gonna notice you won't have any of this any of the stuff here. It's just gonna be nothing. So you can either add a friend and or create a a, a Discord server. Before we can do that, let's take a look at who we are. So, all oh right. <laughs> so when you go to my account, you it shows your username and email. It also shows you your icon in which you can click on the edit button, which is right here. The edit button can edit your profile picture, your username in your email ID, I think, in your password, and you can even disable your account. Not sure what that means, but I wouldn't, I would not try it. I wouldn't try it. And you can even delete your account. So that's about does it for the my account. Now for privacy and safety, this one is about when we scan messages. In, in direct messages, which we'll talk about that later. To so keep me safe is you scan everybody, like everybody's messages. My friends are nice, basically, you don't scan messages of their friends. I live on the edge, mean by you go without any secure, without scanning any messages. Allow direct messages from server members, mean by people from a Discord server can direct message you there. By default, this is going to be enabled, and I pretty much didn't mess with any of this, so these are all, these should be your default options. And you could friend everyone, friends of friends, and even certain members. Now, I don't know what any of this stuff is, <laughs> and it will be personal preference. Now, for authorized apps, these are apps that you can that you get permission to Discord bots. But I won't cover that since it's not really needed in school Discord servers. And this doesn't mean you can't know about it. You can still look it up on other YouTube tutorials about it. Now as for connections, this is about all the different social medias that you want to have attached to your account. I won't cover that since this is extra stuff to your account. As for billing, I won't cover that since I would I would say it's for Discord Nitro, but I think it's for other things, but just don't worry about it. Now everything in even Discord Nitro and all of this, I won't cover it since this is only for those who bought Discord Nitro. And voice and, and video, let's go into that one. This is to set up your different input devices. You can set up your out different output devices. And even how much input volume you can put, how much will it do the output, which is default to 100, greater than that would probably be 200. This is if you want to test to see how your microphone sounds, which I would recommend you put headphones to do that. So what this will do, it will just, if you're already on a call, like on a, on a voice channel, or in a call with somebody, direct message, it would mostly, if I remember correctly, if, I, if I'm correct, actually, it would deafen you and mute you so you can actually do your mic test. 
But anyways, this this is the input mode. Voice activity means that you can just talk your way. This is called push to talk, meaning by you have to set up your your different shortcuts and how you would do push to talk. This is my default, so I'm just this is what what I decided to do. So I'm just gonna put right shift and then the equal sign. I would not mess with this. I would I would want you to talk right away, almost right away. This to set up your your camera, and I'm not gonna do this because that's gonna activate my webcam. As for echo cancellation, I would say you put this so you don't hear any echoes. There are some that will still hear echoes, but that's for mobile, mobile users. So I will talk about that in a different video. Noise suppression on my game control, I would say you would leave that on. Not sure what this is about. This is a, it's on by default, and Discord will tell you if your microphone isn't working, so it'll have like a red uh, message like up here. It'll tell you like we're not detecting any input for your for your mic for your microphone. And that's about all I would cover in this one. That's for overlay, which this is only for the for the PC version. <coughs> it basically helps you on how to display Discord as an overlay or gameplay. I would think it's for a gameplay only. I haven't tried it since I never needed it. I won't cover that since this is also per personal preference. Notification, notification, sorry. This is to, like when you're out of Discord, like you have your Discord closed, I would think. Then you have like a regular message pop up saying who said what. That's what a desktop notification will be. Enable unread message bash, that would be like if someone sent you a direct message. Then you would have actually let me demonstrate that real quick. Like this. Like saying that you got a, that you got a a message from a direct from a you got a direct message. It could be a message from a direct message group or it could be a ping, which a ping means by Actually, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> Enable taskbar flashing. Basically, if you have like your tab closed, like let's go over here and let's just say another one. Hmm. Okay, I guess it didn't do it. But basically, it's just supposed to like flash in orange. That's what taskbar flashing would be. This is to basically it avoids the sending push notifications. This is to see how how many how much time does it need for you to detect that you're that you're AFK, meaning by away from keyboard, which the default is ten minutes. <coughs> this is the text to speech. In which I had it set to never because I do not want to worry about uh, a a bot a bot trying to talk to me about what messages that I need they are. And these are all on by default. They can give you a sound for a message that's been sent. If you deafen, undeafen, mute, unmute, if you disconnect it from a voice channel. Push the talk activate, push talk deactivate, user join, user leave, user moved, outgoing ring from a from a direct message, incoming ring from a direct message, stream started, which is on go live, stream stop, go live, viewer join and viewer leave, these are all from go live, which I'll talk about that later as well. Keep mind, which is only for the PC version. Uh, this is also for overlay, which I also covered, then this is also personal preference. Game activity, those are the, the games that Discord recognizes that you are playing. I will not cover that since this is personal preference. Now the text and images. When posted as links to chat, 
means that the preview of website links, the same goes through the link preview. Means that it just shows you what the preview of the website would be. And when uploaded directly to Discord, it will tell it, it won't preview images or basically anything larger than 10 megabytes. It'll tell you that it's too much memory. So it will ask you to it may ask you to upgrade upgrade to Nitro in order for that to work. Automatically play with GIFs when Discord is focused, which I will show that later what that what that is. And showing emoji reaction, reactions and messages. Not sure why what why you want it off, but basically you see the reactions on messages. Off having it disabled probably means you won't see them. Play animated emoji, like if they're GIFs, like they're emoji but they're GIF, then I'll play it. Disabling it means it won't play it. I have it, it the default is enabled. I said to disable because I actually do want to type the the colon and, and close parentheses instead of it just converting it to an emoji. But it's up to you on that one. This one allows playback of the talk to speech command. There are many other commands that I will not cover. Sorry about that. This will preview different emojis, mentions, or any markdown syntax that you would type. So having it disabled, which I will show you later after you have it disabled. Having it enabled is mostly accurate. When you're doing some I would I would say some some formatting here text. That's what like they also call it. Spoilers I will show I'll show you what those are, but spoilers if you click on it then it will reveal it. On servers that moderate will always have a spoiler. Always. The spoiler content will always be on. But I haven't really tried these, I'm sorry. As for appearance, this is the dark theme. This is the light theme. <coughs> And this is the message display in which cozy would be this, compact would be this. I personally like cozy though, which I think most people would agree. And, mo and I believe most people use dark instead of light, but that's up to you on that one. I will cover this later though, but for now I'll just turn this off so you won't you won't get confused. You'll see why I turned it off. <coughs> stream mode is for only for PC version. This is how Discord handles your streaming apps like OBS. But I won't cover this since this is personal preference. Now as for language this is what language you would like Discord to be in. Windows setting. This is the how Discord acts on your computer in total. So open Discord if you turned on your your computer, it's gonna start turning on Discord. I would say having this enabled would be good if you always want to go to Discord. But if you want your laptop to run faster, I would believe, sorry, computer run faster. <laughs> because some of you may not be a laptop, some of you would have a desktop. So anyways. I would, theoretically, I would say, you having it disabled would save you a lot, would make your computer run faster. So it doesn't start away slow when, when it starts up. Start minimized Discord start. Yeah, that's what it does when they have it minimized. Minimize the tray when you close when you push the X button, it's just gonna minimize. Like it won't really close it unless you do Alt F four. Or you use the control shift escape to use task manager to close Discord. Then that's how you officially just close Discord with this option on. Having disabled I would say you just close Discord completely. Change logs. This is the current log on the latest update on Discord. Although the change log is not the same for both, 
uh, the PC version and mobile version, they have different change logs since they are completely different devices. Logout will is to log out of your account. Now, in this version, you see the Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram option, which that is to see the Discord, Discord company social media. And that about covers it in your user setting. I'm gonna click the wrong one. I'll see that one later. Yeah, that, that's that's my alt account. And when I was trying to test the this right here. So let's talk about the statuses. So by default you have online. Then you have idle, do not disturb, and invisible. Idle, I would say you would use it if you want to be if you want to be away most of the time, or if you want to show it like you're you're away, like your AFK. Do not disturb, you will not get any sounds if you're on do not disturb. Like if someone tries to ping you or send you a, a message from a private message, then you won't hear any sound, it'll just show up still. So. Invisible, that's if you want to, well, you're just going to be invisible, like no one will know you're online. Oh yeah, let me show you what custom status will be. Custom status is you can insert anything. This is called custom status. Which you could do today, four hours, thirty minutes, and don't clear. Which mm -hmm. I can go with. Which I can go with don't clear. Man, my so slow. Anyways, then that's where it appears here. Which is custom status. Anyways, now I'll show you what happens if if you're idle for too long, like the 10 minute uh, timeout. So when you're timeout for 10 minutes, well actually I don't think I need to demonstrate it, sorry. When you're idle for 10 minutes, it'll change to this one, the idle. That's what it will do. Alright, so let's talk about how to, to join a Discord server. So you can either go to the plus button, which then you'll be having this. You'll either create a new server, which you click it and you can just name it however you want, including the icon, or you can go to something called search discovery, in which you can just go in there and search up a community for you to join. But that I won't cover that since that is personal preference. After you create a Discord server, you then see this general chat and your general voice channel. The chats are always start with the hashtag symbol, or a pound symbol, as some people call it, which are always lowercase. This way you send messages, and the voice channel have the speaker symbol right here, in which we will go into that later. Also, you only see yourself once, once you create a Discord server. And also, and also this is, here's how you can send a message. In this box right here, you can just send well, anything. That's how you do a message. Let's talk about markdown text. To do a bolded message, you use two asterisks. And that's how you do a bolded message. Underline is two underscores. By size, there's two ways to do it. You can do a single underscore just using WhatsApp. Or you can do a one asterisk for ITEL size messages. And to do a strike do you use Hilda, I think that's the name of the character. Oh man. There we go. <laughs> then you can actually combine markdown text, which one of them you can combine would be bolded and underlined. 
which you could doesn't matter which way you start it, but it doesn't matter how you end it. You cannot do this because it won't work. So since you started with a two asterisk and two underscores, you must first close the underscores and then the asterisk to get the bullet underlined. Bullet and I tell size, you can do there's one method you can do it like this. Do three abstracts and that's bullet and italicize or actually let's just type it again. You could do underscore and two abstracts. Oops. Now there's multiple ways how you can do underlined and italicized. So you can do underlined and italicized by doing three underscores. Or you can just do it like this. And that's another way you can do it. You can also do something crazy such as what about people just do all, all, all of them. And there you go. Just like we talked about earlier about markdown text with the syntax. First of all, let me do something simple. You got a preview like this, but what about if you don't want the preview? It will be right here. You turn that one off. You won't get a preview anymore. So you just get it plainly like that. But, oops. I would leave this on since it actually helps to know which one you messed up on or which one you didn't mess up on. So that's what that would do. Alright, now let's talk about emojis. So you can put emoji by clicking this right here. And yeah, you can do that. Or you can just do a, a colon and type in which one emoji you want. And you can put tab to complete it. Another thing about emoji is when you do, uh, like for example, let's put thumbs up. Actually, enter the first one, the first emoji, or you do your your arrow, scroll arrows to navigate your way to <laughs> click on the emojis or not. And escape to delete the menu. That's another way to do it. That's just clicking out of it. Now you can use external emojis from other servers, which by clicking this, which I'm in a few of them, like there's Nintendo Land. So you see YouTuber. Or you can use external emojis from this current Discord server, which I didn't add it. Alright, so I added the emoji, sorry about that. You did have another uh, emoji in which you can add that is from this discord server but if you just create a server you won't have that you have to upload it by yourself now you're using extra or even animate emoji if you're using even animate emojis you won't really have permission to put them unless you have nitro like for instance um in this one want to upgrade emoji powers then you need to buy Discord Nitro. Which that can vary, but I won't talk about that in this video, sorry. Now here are other things you can do, which this is where we get more advanced. You can use escape characters, which like if you want to show somebody how to do italicize, and you can use a backslash underscore, so you can do escape characters. That way you can stay. But I'm, if I got that right, which is from the, the right boss website, you don't even need the, the backslash once you do it in the very beginning. You 
you can even do something like this in which you do uh, Try one backslash won't work, but you can do a pull backslash to cancel the backslash, which that's what we call. That's where we start using code wise. Where only one backslash will escape, such as you can even do backslash quotation mark. Like backslash quotation mark, you need like multiple of them. Make that into a single backslash. So I, I think of it as a Java. <laughs> uh, what I what was the word? I'm sorry. I forgot the terminology for it. I'm sorry. But it just but it just reminds you of a certain coding one, coding thing. This works on literally anything you can do. This or even have a well backstage won't work. It has to be something more terminology. This works. This works. This works. Wow, even this works. Basically, anything that is not a letter, then it will work. Which I think you get the point. But these are just different ways to show you about which which one works, which one doesn't work. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Now let's talk about how to do monospace. Model space. This is what you would use a single. Uh, if I, if I got that right, it would be a back character or a tick character, which I just got that from the right box website. You use model space. It even works with this one too. You just use two of these. It's not semicolon. It's a it's a common mis uh, common misconception. If you use a semicolon, not a semicolon, it's this one. Your difference right there. A semicolon, that's a back tick. Which I'll be the button above your tab. Like you see the tilde by doing this. Instead of doing shift and do it, you just do the shift, and there you go. Okay, now let's talk about code blocks. So in code blocks, you can do three of these back ticks. This is a code block, which if you do that in WhatsApp, it will be three back ticks in order to do the model space. But in Discord, that's a code block. Which in code blocks, you don't have to worry about the enter would be send message. You can do multiple lines. Okay, uh, we'll talk about why that happened later on. Yeah, you can do this without worry since code blocks, well, the whole point is to put code in it. <laughs> Some people use it for other reasons. So now let's talk about code colors. So with code colors, you could do CSS for green text. And it doesn't matter how you end it, you can end it here, or you can end it here. But I would just put it here. We'll talk about why that matters later. And CSS, this is for red-orange. Yeah, it looks like red-orange instead of red. And you can have green afterwards. Basically, whatever's in the brackets will be red-orange. Oops. Then here's another thing you can do with CSS. I mean, this would be blue, but you have to use underscores to get this won't work. So 
So basically, you can have three different colors in CSS. Sorry if I bother some of you guys if you see that it's a different color. Sorry. Yeah, the colors here three colors already. Now let's do, now what about orange? I'm saying it's, it's yellow, but to me that looks like orange. I guess it could be goldish, like, color. But you do fix for that. And then you just type whatever text here. As to blue, light blue actually, you do an equal sign at the beginning. And you have to make sure it's on fix to do that. So you can have two colors in fix by doing here. And unfortunately, once you do the equal sign, the rest is gonna be just that color. So you can't really undo it. Like, like I'll even try to close it again. You can't undo that. That one's permanent. Well, in CSS, uh, you can end your your color syntax. <laughs> Another one I would like to introduce is if or D I double F. Typing in normal text does nothing. So here's where you need to do more syntax for this one. This one requires more syntax. I do the minus now that's red. And to see the preview correctly, you push enter. Which I would say for all the code, you need to push enter. Like you can't have the back tick like right next to it, or else it won't work. To do green in it, you need to type. You have a plus sign in the beginning. And then there's your three colors. That's your normal one right there, and what a code block would be, such as that one up there, if it had no syntax. That's green. That's red. So then let's talk about how to make blue text. That's blue text and it's normal text. Okay, then let's talk about highlighting a text. In order to highlight a text, you must do this way. Oh wow, okay. Let me try something then. So with text, and, and um, common, I would say a common misconception would be you type it like that. You, know, you must have it without a T at the end. You have that. Once you do the dollar sign, it basically just makes everything else highlighted blue. So if you want your normal text, which Probably most most of you won't want that. Then you want to put it before you start with your, do with your dollar sign. Another one would be MD, which is just light blue. And then this is red orange. Something happened. Oh wow, yeah, you need to put them together in order for that to work. So you can't have one of them, you must have both of them together in order to do light blue and red orange. An elixir, you need this is normal text. This is dark gray. Or you can just say gray, but to me that's dark gray. 
Alright, so that's enough code block colors. So, the original intention, like, you can use code blocks to show different syntax of how your code works. It just makes it look neater on the, I would say neater on the eyes, and it just looks nicer. Like, without you want a C++ program, but just CP. It's not C++. That's not what it is. It's CP. We'll just do the normal hello world. And then there's others like Java or Python or even Ruby. Now let's talk about what happens if you do like an emoji in a code block. Emoji in a code block, that's where this comes in. You look like your default emoji, just like on your device. Like in my laptop, that's what the emoji looks like. But pasting that here turns it into a Discord version of it, and it even puts it big if you don't have no text next to it. That makes it small, but just having the emojis by themselves, you can make them really big like that. The same thing happens with monospace. If we do, well, let me tell you what happens if you have an emoji before you finish it. Like doing this. Doing this would we'll just call it to say smiley. Really, that's what it is. Even mom's face, which mom's face you, it doesn't happen like that. It just automatically turns to smiley. This one, for some reason, it just starts immediately saying, Oh, uh, it's this one. It will not work if you have this because it'll just start saying smiley like that. You must have a different way to do it, which Windows 10 is Windows semicolon open up your emoji keyboard. Another way to get your emoji keyboard out would be you can go to Google Chrome and you just right click and put emoji. There you go. Yeah. So then you could just navigate uh, your way here, here, but yeah. Even the most recently used one as well. And then you show you what happens if you do a code block and then text after it, which is why I said it, it actually does matter how you structure your, your code blocks. So you have it afterwards, it, and the next line you say text here. You have this much space with here. Code block, and then you can even put text here. Also does the same. Doing this, putting it right afterwards, makes it go extremely close together. Or code block and then text here. Oh man, okay, yeah, I forgot. If you don't want that extra space, it's better you put it right after the tick, the back ticks. If you want to put multiple colors, like some of us wish we can have multiple of these together, you can do something like this, CSS, let's just copy all this stuff, and then close it, and then open the three of these again, fix, and then orange, or actually let me start saying gold, it does look gold actually, and light blue. And there you go, you have this together. <coughs> what is amazing though is that you would think you cannot do hold it inside a code block because then it looks like this. In order to make it hold it, you need to do it before you do the back takes. That's how you make a code block bolded. You can even make it underlined or even have a strike through on it.
And the thing about when it comes to Actually, I'll cover that later. Yeah, you can go crazy with that. Now let's talk about spoilers. Spoilers are these vertical lines. So you need two of these, and this is called a spoiler text. But yeah, it doesn't can be mentioned it before. On click means this to reveal the spoiler. A search on moderate or always. Like, let me try the always, by the way. It just automatically reveals it. If you don't want that, then it's best if you just have it on click. There you go. Now, you can go crazy with this by saying underscore this the text here and this makes a under this makes a underscore spoiler now can you do it inside it I would say so so you don't have to do it before you can even do it inside it'll still work Now, monospacing is different. If you do monospacing and then spoiler, it will not work. If you want to do the monospacing, it has to be inside the vertical line in order for this to work. It goes with this one. Now, with code block, it's a different story. If you do it inside, it will not work. And you have this. Now, if you want to do it before the code block, you get this weird. Um, notice how my mouse looks like. It looks like this first. Then you have a clicking animation. Now it goes away once after you click it. Now doing this with a quote works. Oops. Hmm. Alright, yeah, I'm sorry. Anyways, well, I'm basically showing you the next thing I'm going to talk about. Let's talk about quotes. So, quotes would be this thing. You need a greater than, and then your text after that. But remember, you need to have a space. You cannot put it after it because it won't work. It has to have a space in order for it to work. You can even have mouse space in a code, and you can even have a code with a code block. And you can even have multiple space block. And it looks something like that. Now, mobile version is just going to look weird for you, but. It, it only works in the PD version, of, unfortunately. But I was trying this in which what happens if you do a spoiler within a code? For some reason, spoilers don't work like that. You can have a spoiler inside a code. And then there you go. You can have a spoiler before that. Now you can insert pictures or GIFs. Like for instance, let's put this picture here, or the GIF actually. Now with GIFs, you have this. Uh, sorry, which is not the favorite. If you actually want to to download the picture, you can go to Open Original, which takes you to uh, to your default browser. So you can save it like that, or you can right click it and go to open link, copy link just does this, in which you can reattach it like that. Now 
Now, what about if you don't have a GIF with you, but you'd rather have a tenor GIF? Well, it just looks something like this. We have this nice looking file here. It was the PC version, it automatically displays it. And here's what we we're talking about by the GIF plays if you're in Discord. For Discord focus. Otherwise, it looks something like. Well, actually, let's go here, then go here. It actually, if you look closely, yeah, it's a GIF and then it played again. And even though it's right here, it just stopped playing. That's what I mean by if it's Discord focus. Like this one here. So if you put this one on off, then you need to click on it. Uh, it you need to actually hover over it in order for it to work. But just to let it keep playing. So let's talk about video downloads. Which video downloads? This is this is a video by the way, which you can just type that. And you can even play this. This is a test. And then yeah. You can just download here, and which will take you to a browser asking if you want to save it. Which no I don't. Do you have a playback option? Then you can even start it wherever else. You can even change the volume or not. You can even put a full screen. So that's what a video does. But there are others in which you could. Another thing you can really do is you can attach documents. So you have this icon right here to download it. You attach a WAV file in which it just recognizes as a music. This is a test. And exactly, I said the same thing, but. You can download it too, but you do have that play by, uh, playback option. If it's not, if it's something like an AAC file, but still audio, it does this. It doesn't recognize it. You have a download like that. Now, external website links would be. an external weapon link and some of them show previews. If you exit out, it will never show the preview again. If you want to not show it, you can also alternatively just put the some people call it angle brackets by call it less than or greater than. You took out the preview by doing this. You can also attach YouTube links in which it looks something like this. Now in this PC version, you can do that, but at this time, as if I recorded it, this is actually premiered. It premieres in two days, but normally, yeah, it does play it. We scroll far enough to actually... Yeah, that's what happens if you have too many messages, it'll just do that. You can do share, watch later. Clicking on this will take you, this is what I have to be on a premiere video, clicking on this will take you to the actual YouTube uh, page, web page, sorry. You can, so a normal video will, will play if you put the play button, this will take you to the, which I would say it takes you to the web page of it. So we notice you have multiple chats. Hmm. Yeah, I just never seen it this way before. Okay, anyway. So this is multiple chats in which this is your general chat. Now this is the second chat. So that's basically how multiple chats work, and the same thing go up into voice channels. Where I'll just create a new one real quick. you can actually have space. If you join one voice channel, it tries to reconnect to one of them, you can instant join the next one. 
but we'll talk more about how voice channels works later. Now, when you're having more than 50 messages, like we have unread uh, having more than 50 messages, like for instance, let's make them all unread. It would actually you could you can click on this it will show go all the way up there. See that takes you to the beginning, which will start saying twenty five plus new messages. And then you mark it red and there you go. Uh what? What happened here? That's really weird. I really I saw a hmm because there were videos here and I just went here. Okay, and never mind. Now here's how to edit a message because you see me do it. So here's the original message. if you don't want to say that. For edit message, you click on these three dots and click edit message. Notice edit message. Now change to edit message with edit right here. Now delete message, one way to delete it is you push this and yeah, delete, which you can push enter to delete it. How to add a reaction, you can do this in which you just go ahead and just put a thumbs up. Yeah, that's called a reaction. You can add multiple of them if you like. See those you could put more than one reaction. When you use the GIF uh, option, this is where you can search different GIFs which is using the tenor, I would say, search engine, which is for GIFs. This gift box icon is for people who bought Discord Nitro, which I won't cover it in this video, sorry. And you can pin a message, which pinning a message means you can always go back to it. It'll tell you, uh, Dr. Line 78 pinned a message to this channel. See all pins would do this, a message would do this. This will say who pinned it. Going to pin, you can like for instance, go all the way here, jump goes where it's supposed to be at. But how it affects on different chats is you want to find the same one. It's not here because it's not pinned in this chat. It's pinned over here. So that's what it be. And to unpin it, you just need to push unpin. You can also quote a message in which you go here and this is an advanced example. Once you put quote, you actually have the same thing. And yeah, you can do that. And it'll tell you, it'll just ping the person. So that's what I mean by ping. Pinging means that you mention this, the person and it'll do this to them. It'll make the message be on a uh, brown background with yellow at, at the edge. At the edge. Another thing about how to ping, or I would not say ping people like this because this annoys some people. But everyone, you ping everybody. Or you can ping the specific role, which is here, but only ping the person who is currently online, then they'll get the ping. If they're not online, it will not ping them. And I'll talk about roles later. When also quoting, you can also, um, let's for example, quote, let's just use the same example in which, well not the same example, let's try something simple. Which is just grab italicized text like this. Like for example, you want to reply, instead of pinging the person, oops. Put, okay, thank you. And there you go. And also, if you want to undo something you did in a message, you would, just like I did, 
you just hit control V and then control Y to go back. Okay, looks like that didn't work. Which you when you do quote it only does quoting the last thing you did. But you can't go back, you can only undo. So another thing you can do is when you're editing editing a message, you can also quickly delete a message by making it go all blank and then ask if you want to delete it and yes we do. That's also how you delete a message instead of just putting the three dots put delete. Oh yeah, and I just so told, told you this about you can even mark something's unread. But since this this is the ping, it'll do red like that. Then you can do that. Let's just do a normal text like this and put it on red. You got a normal one doing one new message, and then there you go. And then you have this right here, meaning that this chat was not read yet. And you have that same thing that happened here, you'll have it on this Discord server. If you were to have something on red. But it's actually buggy on the mobile version when you mark something as unread. So here are some advanced techniques about, <coughs> about when it comes to sending a message. So you can make a uh, multiple lines by using an external you can use externally like notepad in which you could say this is a test. You copy that and paste it. No, no, save. So here, then that's how you do multiple lines. That's one way to do it. Or you could do shift plus enter to make multiple lines. Or you can make this is a really long message that keeps going until I find it. That's another way you can make another line so you keep it writing uh, a long uh, a long message and it'll just make the, the next line for you. So if you want paragraph one, paragraph two. When you do this, underscore space underscore, you just made a blank message. This is also a neat trick in this if you want to start with a blank message, like if you made a very long message and you just start here. It's very useful if you want to if you have a really long message. It'll say 2,000 characters, which to fix this. When you have something very long, it'll tell you how much character it was over. It's very useful though. Something like this, which will count backwards to 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And what if you want to continue it like that? And there you go. You actually have a continuation of your long message to, to be like this. Now, let's say you like uh, a, certain re a certain reaction and you want to save that emoji. Okay, so for example, let's say you want to save this one. So you go ahead and copy the link. And you can't start here because it won't work. It has to be on the emoji for it to work. Well, actually, you can copy the link. They wish you just go, you just do this and it'll just do that. 
and you could save that picture. That's one way to do it, but another way is you open the link, which will take you to your browser. And say picture as. Also another thing you can do is, what if you like that, that emoji. Because some people actually do external emojis, they'll just, it won't, it won't, you can't, you can't like, type it if, if they're, you're in a Discord server. Because it didn't, it didn't originate from the Discord server, it originated elsewhere. So what you would do, instead of copying it, if you don't have Discord Nitro, you will again, copy the link, or open the link, which goes to your browser, and you can save it like that. That's how you save external emojis without Nitro. Well, I don't know with Nitro you can do it. You probably can't, but yeah. And we tried this last time, in which you cannot... Like, for instance, let's say you have an emoji that you like, but it's in a code block. You cannot save it. It's like a locked emoji. But even then, <coughs> it, it, the reason why it's like locked up in there is because it's not like from Discord anymore. These are all Discord provided. Um, these are all Discord provided emojis. So even that's Discord provided. As this smiley face is not the same thing as this smiley face. This is this version, the Discord version. The emoji might be it being provided by Discord, in which the same goes with monospace. The monospace can actually use your default looking emoji. But what's funny enough is that you can actually do markdown text with the emojis. Like for instance, you can even highlight it. <laughs> you can highlight it, but you but certain emojis cannot work if you pull them. Pulling means nothing to this emoji, but it does work with something like this. For instance, this one, and if you do pull, you watch carefully, it did change, so it did do something to the emoji. Also, it's the same to a heart. It, it, I don't know if you, you noticed it or not, it, it probably did. Just let me settle with the heart. So basically, both works. Both. Both works on certain emojis, but everything else works. Like you can make an emoji, like this, be a strike through, or you can underline it. If you notice, yeah, you can do italicize. It looks strange, but yeah, you can italicize it. But yeah, now here's something that's only for PC. If you delete it, you get an undefined emoji. So with this, you even push enter, it deletes it. Doing this and deleting it, or you can push an equal sign and replace it. Doing it by itself will give you this. Your message could not be delivered because you don't share or serve with the recipient or you disable direct messages on your shared server. The recipient is only accepting direct messages from your friends or were blocked by the recipient. Which that means nothing. It's just because it just didn't recognize it. You can do something like this and you can paste it. And you just got this question mark by itself. Pushing retry with this in which you can create multiple of these, but why would you want to do that? So please don't. I really don't want you to do that. Once you do that, you can create 
Me like this. But having this, having this, and then with a escape, an escape character. So you can even try this. It just seems crazy already. Oh no, you can't do that. It'll just escape. It'll just do the equal sign. Cast it originally what you did to it. So, which is pretty interesting, is it? It's like, how did you even make it invalid? Well, I just did as a plus sign to it. Okay, actually, just did backslash by itself. But anyways, so in order to actually save what you did, you need to save it from the error message, and you could do something crazy like that. But what about if you actually copy something like this? You can search this up call uh, emojis. That don't load, and then you can just copy it. Doing something like this, oops, not that one. It's this one, I'm trying to copy. It is still deleted, but But you can make some pretty interesting text by doing this. Basically messing with undefined emojis. But you can't copy the square box because it's invalid. See how you can't delete it? Going forward, you just do that. So you have to save it. Make sure you save it so you can answer at the end. So these are in your mobile version. It'll look like a square instead of the X right there. So you're dealing with unknown emojis or undefined emojis. So that can be pretty fun and interesting. <laughs> you're basically breaking the messages at this point. Let's talk about voice channels. A voice channel is a place where you can go you can speak to others. You have some options when you are in a call. Like if we were to join our general call, uh, a general voice channel, some options we have is muting. Muting yourself means by you will not be able to speak with a microphone, but you can reply in a chat about what you are saying. Usually in most Discord servers, they have a, a chat that's associated with this call. And other options that could be maybe you want to deafen yourself. Which deafening yourself on the PC version mutes you and deafens you. Which you cannot speak or hear others. So there's some options that you have. One thing I know about when, when joining a voice channel is you will instantly join when you click on it. So that's one thing that will happen. And you can also screen share in, in a call by going to the go live. And the go live does not mean that, that you are recording. No, that's not what it means. Go live, basically you're just going into to screen share. It'll just have the live in the side right here. That's where the go live would be. And the go live application would be any full screen uh, software that you have. Like for instance, you want to screen share paint. But you can do that, it'll show you it works. See? And your cursor follows along this too. But if you didn't want to, you didn't want to screen share that, you can either stop streaming it, or you can just switch your window. But you want to screen share everything, you would go to screens, and then screen one. And there you go. So now you're doing the whole screen share. When it comes to screen sharing, people can actually join your 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 stream. Like they can go here and put the join stream, which yours will say your stream, but then for them they'll say join stream. 
you can't click it there but then if you click on the join string it'll just click on it the so far right here if it'll show There we go. So we have this one in which you can, if you wouldn't have this, if they weren't looking at the live. So that when they leave, you would just have just the invite. Invite people to a stream and clicking on this, you can push invite here, and then they'll do this, and this is what it looks like for them. You are live, and you is just watching. So when you click on it, they'll join the stream, and that's what it looks like. The invite link to to go watch your 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 go live. But for others, they'll say join stream. If they hover this one, will, if you hover over the, the live here, when it's loading, it'll say you're streaming. But for others, they'll say join stream, which I'll show you what that looks like. It's just the same, but it just says join stream. So they could just join this call, and they could put jo join stream, and I'll. Instead of just invite, it'll show the the eyeball and which how many specs you have, which is one person. It's my alt account. Then you can even go here and it says how many specters. I'm sorry about the if this is making you. Anyways, uh, the option option here, which is stop streaming, stream settings. Or you can make it pop out, which opens a new window. Oh man, okay, let me get out of here. Okay, so that's what it does. Well, okay, you know what, I'm just going to show you a better example. I'm sorry about that. So let me show you what that looks like for others. Like, let's say they're streaming. Let's say they're streaming their own disc Discord. If they, if they just stream and you're in there, it'll look like this. They stream just started getting here. If you go to another chat, it's gonna up, it may update the preview or update it soon. Another way to make it update is leaving a Discord server, from my experience, I would think. But you can't rely on this when multiple people are stream because this does not always update. And just like I talked earlier, for others, it looks like join stream. And you can even make this uh, go pop out. See? So that opens up in a new window. And you can even pin it if you want, which is stay on top. You can increase the volume. You see who, are, how, who else is expecting. Sorry. Or you can make it go on full screen. When multiple people are going uh, live stream, let's just put paint again. <coughs> yeah, you can do this, but it's not always reliable, like I said. Okay, the previews don't always update. They update, like, I would say every 10 seconds, I think? 5 seconds? I'm not sure, but it just doesn't update, like, constantly. It's my point. So, in plus, you have to join the stream in order to see their stream. To see their screen share. Also, let me show you what that looks like if if you're just if you're just elsewhere, like you're not in the Discord server or you join but you're not in the call, it look like this. And you're in the Discord server, made by someone when you do the go live. And you can join the call angles and see their stream by clicking this one, this icon. I wonder why this, the sounds are, are working this time, but didn't earlier. Also, when you're in here, you could have you could hover over your, the, the discourser, and it shows the speaker, meaning by you're just talking, while the the monitor icon means by they're doing the screen share with the go live. It looks different with screen share via link, which I will show you that soon. Also, let me show you what it looks like when they close the stream. When they close it, it looks something like this. The stream has ended. Cricket noise.
So yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay, so maybe if you didn't want to screen share that way, but perhaps you want to screen share using an old school method, which we use it, which we just use a link to it. So in order to do that, you would do https discord app dot com slash channels slash. This is where you're gonna need developer mode, which is why I turned it off earlier. I turned it off earlier because it shows more options than you normally would see. Like a good example would be this one. Notice you only have up to delete message. And we're gonna try on developer mode in this one because we're gonna need it in order to, to get our URLs. Once you have developer mode activate, then you get into test mode. Which I don't, you don't need to go that far, you just need developer mode, that's it. When you have developer mode uh, on, then you have the copy ID and copy message link, but we're not gonna copy those links. In order to get our screen share link to this call, you need to right click on the Discord server you're in, copy ID, paste here, slash, copy the call that you want to get the screen share of, then copy ID, paste, and there you go. Now you're in here. And because I want to show how this how this stuff works, let me first disable stream mode. Then now you have these options. The Toronto screen share works the same, except it's confusing at first, mean uh, thinking you only can screen share. That's not the case. You know, this will screen share the whole screen, like everywhere. Once screen share a specific window, that's when you go to application window and the tabs up here. You can either have sound on or sound off, but why would you want to have your sound off if you want to do something? For your entire screen, you did get this warning saying sound may not be available when sharing a screen on your device. So you do get that warning. So if you want the sounds to work for definite, you would need to, to do your application window. But normally in this case, yeah, I don't really need, I don't need to worry about it. So this is like a dirt, uh, a call and a direct message since you do have these options when you do join it. The difference is that what GoLive doesn't have is this camera. When, I'm not going to turn this on, but when you turn that on, that turns on your webcam. Your muting is over here, but you can also still mute and deafen. You can disconnect, which you disconnect from this call. This one just goes back to your voice and video, but you click on that. And when you go back to general, you basically left it forever. You can't go back. That's why you need the link. So another thing to know about when you're screen sharing this way is it'll show a camera icon. That doesn't mean your webcam is on. That just means you use the link version to go to screen share. Go live just uses the, the monitor icon. So you have this camera icon, but this does not mean your webcam is on. That just means you just use a screen share using this link. Let's talk about when other people uh, go on to the call. The, if they were to do this method, they do see that someone else is doing a screen share. Uh, let me first do... Yes, Microsoft Word is okay. So you can have multiple people that, that do the screen share. See, you, you're now looking at their screen. But clicking out of it, then you see both screen shares at once. Let me change mine, that's probably going to be a headache. So if you want to stay... Uh, I'm curious, can you search something here? Hmm. Okay, yeah, that's strange. Didn't know you can do that. So let's say you you don't want that window, but you want another one. So you go to that monitor and put change windows. And let's say, yeah, we just want... 
there we go. Let's say you want to paint again. There you go. See how you can see the two different screen shares. Now if you don't want a screen share, it goes back to something like this. Which shows your profile picture like this. And for them, you see their one screen share. So clicking out of this, you see, let's say they didn't screen share. Then it turns changes to a call. So it, it's just if one of you guys is doing the screen share delete link, that's what it means. That's why you have this icon up here. But that's how multiple screen shares work and that's one thing that you that's a that's those are more things to say about screen share uh using the link. For some players, they cannot, and you know, I know you heard that sound. That's a sound that plays when you disconnect from a call. Anyways, when you go to the links, for some some people, it can work if you click on this link, which you'll just get this window. Some won't let them do that unless they join the call first, and then they click the link in order for it to work. And that's basically how they do their screen share in that one. Now, you may be wondering, if screen sharing and go live are different, can you have them together? The answer to that is no, you can't. Like, for instance, we'll screen share. Um, let me see. We'll just put this one. And then we go live. On this one the question that is can you actually have your screen share there the answer is no it just replaces it with this so no you cannot you cannot do your screen share the link and go live you have to choose one it would have been a, it would have been awesome if you have a double layer considering that like for instance let's copy this link if you were to copy your let me go live to make put it back Hmm. Okay, um, but you get the point that you cannot stream and you can do the link. You need to do one of them. Another thing about when it comes to you can do in Discord is direct messages. See, so now we'll be talking about direct messages. For instance, if my own account join, and they did join, what do you mean? Anyways, so you can click on the user in which you have these options. You can view their profile, but since I'm in stream mode, it won't show what you would have. But in user information, it'll tell you all the different connections they have, like if they have a YouTube account, uh, they, if they have Twitch, they have a Steam account or anything. It also has the notes that you have. It's covered because I'm in stream because I have a stream mode enabled. For you guys, you won't have this if you're not if you don't have any streaming device such as OBS. And within the notes, you can call the person whatever you want to call them, but only you can see it. But let's just say I didn't, I was not friends with, with, with this guy, but we'll talk about friend requests later. 
but you can send a message here to them, which they'll take you to a direct message. User information, like I said, what it does. Mutual service, which is which ones you you have service in common with. Mutual friends tells you which friends do you have in common with this person. But an alternative way to to message would be typing in here, then it'll take you to the direct message. Let's just say you want the direct message, the person I'm in my alt, by the way. For then, let me say hi. I'll take him to a direct message. These are all direct messages. So what you see here is you basically have a chat all to this one person. And this is probably what you would see. You would just see this empty, nothing here. None of these uh, Discord servers would be here. You would have the plus and the discovery one. Your friends, you probably wouldn't have many friends. Nitro is something else. But yeah, that's basically you and your person only. You can even pin messages here, which which I, I forgot to tell you how many pin messages you can have. It's, you can have 50 in total. You cannot have exceed 50. But I really did the full uh, research, which is would be 50 in total, like, like 50 in total, or is it 50 per person? Oh, if you see this icon, that means that the person's on their mobile device. Otherwise, if they have their PC on, but they have their mobile device, you basically would just have a green circle instead, since I would think the PC version overrides everything. Okay. So, so I haven't really said anything, but when you search in this, you can search in this chat, or you can even search over here, which the search option you could do from. It's gonna be hard to say. I mean, I can't get this to work, I'm not sure why. See, the videos, these work. As works before, works then you have you can pick a date with the filter it in, which you can even then put newest, oldest, and most relevant. Most relevant will probably be well, that would be it'd be interesting what to do. Oldest would probably be the oldest one, which I just said this a test at the very beginning. But do that to all of them. All are gonna have newest, oldest, and most relevant. During is during what day? After during what day? Then in what? And chat two, there's nothing this one or this one. But there are some Discord servers where error, well, in will be left out, but after, and basically anything else beside in. It depends on what you're saying, but uh, but there's we have multiple chats. It can just go to multiple, it can suggest multiple chats. That's why you gotta be careful which one. Like, for example, let's put hi in this one. You'll suggest something like this. There's chat two and there's general, where there's hi. But yeah, anyways. Sorry about that. Let's go back to direct messages. Now, in Discord, uh, direct, sorry, direct messages. You can call the person by pushing this, which I just calls them. And they have 30 seconds to answer. I have my phone with me though. Okay, so when they do join the call, uh, you can, they do have the option to screen share, share on the camera. It depends on what they're in, by the way. Whether it be on their phone, it'll be from the camera itself, but on the PC, it's going to be from the webcam. Unless you have any other different ways that you'll use the camera. I think it'll be how you set it up in your video settings. Which will be from... 
voice and video. Depends how you set it up. Then you can test it there if you want. You can mute and unmute. Screen sharing. Oops. Uh, let me do that again. Or right, you know, let's try something different. It's like how we went over the the screen share via link. That's why you have this, and you can click out, which you can do this. It'll be sideways. That's what I meant by a call and a direct message. That's what I was referring to. I was referring to this, where you have exactly like this on the screen share via links. It which full screen. It just puts you on full screen. It knows you have region. This depends on where you called from. Like whoever called from. Like if I start this call and I'm from the, the United States, then that's where this region will happen. Or is that when I was from another country, it'll put what region they are from. To Depends on who you who called called it first, and that's will say the region. But yeah, so this is another thing that we can see with user settings. You can do this, but it'll take you back to voice and video. And let's try something different. What if you actually did a video call? We do a video call, it might do something with your webcam. See, I covered my webcam, so it won't show me. But yeah. That's why if you do the video call, it'll do your webcam. If you're on the PC. So you just gotta be careful how you start the call. There also is something called uh, a Discord group. In Discord groups, you can create one. So you can just either invite myself, my main one, or you can just create an empty one like that. And you can either... See, this is where it comes in with friend requests. When you do friend requests, if they're your, they are a friend, you can literally add them like this, or you just need to give them this, which you create, and you just copy this to give them an invite link, but that's if you, you're trying to put people that are not your friends into this Discord group. But if you close this and it went away, it's okay, you just need to open this back up, and then just put this one in. It'll be named this, which you can always rename your group. Let's just put a tutorial group. Okay, and I forgot to mention, you know, you can change an icon. By clicking on change icon like that. Anyway, it'll give you this saying, um, underscore, underscore, change the name channel to tutorial group. You can pin messages here and basically anything else. You want to take out the end of this, you just need to click this. And when you go to the at the, the dimensions, this tells you all the different times that someone has to, done at everyone. Or to make that. Or basically ping you. And this is help, which I would think it takes you to the Discord app support. That's what this will be. And you can pin messages here in which, oh wait, I think I already said that. And when you do the member list, sorry, I mean, add friends. You need to have at least one friend in order to do this invite, or else it won't work. Like, let's say I remove this guy. Well, actually, let's first remove the friend. Which he becomes like this. And even if he goes on offline, it will still be bright like this. If you, if he was a, if I was a friend, my main account, it will be faded if I've gone invisible. But, 
So I'm not necessarily un invisible, then I'm just going to stay like that. Let's say I removed it from the group. Which says that I removed uh, myself from the group. So if you try to do the add friends again, it says you don't have any friends because that was my only friend. Also notice that this is now marked offline when really I'm online. Because in order to get me to be back to the to be a friend, uh, first of all, you cannot have someone join there unless you have the link. And which it, if if you're the only one in this direct message group, the invite link is messed up. It has no title. It says there's zero members online. It even has no logo. Unless someone else joins. But yeah, so in order to friend the guy, you can actually go to profile, send the friend request, and by going to the friends, Oops. You have outgoing from request. You can always cancel it though. And there you go. You probably be defaulted to all. If then there you go. You you would just be here saying wait on friend, but you don't have to do. Online basically shows you all the, the friends that are online. Pending shows you if you have an outgoing one or you have an incoming friend request, which I'll show you that soon. Blocked who you blocked, which I will show that later. Add friend, you can add a friend by the username and the four digits after the pound symbol. Then you put friend, friend request, but I'm not going to do that one. But let's say you have an incoming friend request. If you were on a Discord server you, and you weren't there, you have this uh, right here, the one right here, it may, and maybe you have more than one, depending on how many you have. And you go to friends, <laughs> if you were like on a direct message and you go up here, then you go to pending. Either accept or ignore. Ignore means you declined it. Once you accept, it does fix up the, the status. And I have all your friends and who is online. And yeah, you're friends with them again. And you can just strip sad them back to the group. You got them back. Alright, so the next thing we should talk about is... What about if you were, you were to, to block them? If you were to block them, you can either do it that way, or you can profile, and then you can go to block. But blocking them would be, like, whatever message they send. First of all, it just marks them as offline, like you're not friends with them anymore. In typing a message, it'll show this. To show a message, you just need to click on it, then collapse it. But this is unblock me. There you go. So now that's better. But that's what happens with block people. And plus, if, if you, I'm sorry, I have to block myself again. Oh yeah, if you block someone, it'll also unfriend them. It'll also show here who you blocked, which you can also unblock here. There, can't fix it. Note that when you do uh, make a call, just like I talked about earlier, when it comes to when you call when you call someone from a from a direct message in the direct message in a direct message groups, you can only have up to ten members. You can't add more than ten. 
and you can start a voice call, a video call, just like how you can do with a direct with a direct message. But the thing about it is, when you call, you call everybody, and everybody will be notified that you're calling them. The same thing happens with video call. So that's the, what the difference is between a direct message group and direct message. Direct messages, you're just calling them. Direct message group, direct message group, you're calling everybody. Now, one thing that you must know is the difference between. Well, before we even get to that, is let's talk about muting. When you're muting chats, you can act. You can mute myself for 15 minutes, one hour, eight hours, 24 hours until it turns back on. Which I would say is infinite time. You do it like that. <coughs> cool if you never decide to to unmute it. The thing you could do is that you can invite people to other Discord server. That's what you can do with the invite link. Just like you create an invite link to your direct message, you can do the same for if you were to invite your friend to to a, to a different Discord server. But when you're trying to mute a conversation, you can do you can do the same like this by right clicking it. And yeah, you can mute the conversation for a third amount of time. But when you do mute a conversation, the only way you can actually get messages is if there's a call that went on, a video call, or if someone did the mention, like they mentioned your name or did add everyone. Now, to, now on a Discord server, you can mute it by right clicking it, or you can go here and do notification settings, but right clicking this, you must go to notification settings. You can either server mute it, maybe you mute everything. You can even say how many notifications you get. All messages means you're always going to get pinged for every message. Well, not pinged, but you get notified for how many messages have went through. For the at mentions. And nothing. Nothing mean by... Well, I don't know how that works, but at mention mean by only if they do the mention or the ping, then that's how you get the message. Suppress that everyone are at here would be what about if you didn't want to get pinged all the time by that? That's what it will try to do. It'll try not to ping you to say you got pinged by that. Same thing goes for that mention. I don't know what this is. I'm sorry. This one you could say uh, you can specify a channel in which it overrides the default notification settings, and you can specify which one to. To change, like you want to be on all, mention nothing, or you just completely mute it. And that's how this works. And the difference between a direct message, direct message group, and Discord server is direct message is, first of all, any direct message or direct message group has this instead of a bunch of chats and voice channels. You have the person and your group. So direct message is one and one and with a single person. Well, a direct message group would be you actually do have the member list like a here, and it's just one single child with more with more than one person. In which you have this crown specifying who who's the who's the one to create this. Leaving this group actually would be that this has been given to someone else. And a Discord server be you have its own space for it, which you can only have up to 50 Discord servers. So clicking on this, then you go there. And this is a Discord server. We have multiple chats and multiple voice channels. And that's what a, the difference is between a direct message and a Discord server. Another thing about the muting would be, you can also mute categories, which categories would be chats inside, or voice channel inside under a header, you could say, which is the text channel category. So you can mute individual chats, or you can mute, you can mute this channel for a certain amount of time, or you can mute the, the whole category in which everything is muted. You can collapse if you want to.
So you can uncheck this if you don't want it to collapse automatically, but I just have not collapse if I really if I already mute the category. You can't unmute voice channel because they're just voice channels. They're not chats where you can type messages. But that's another method you can have uh, you can mute a category. Let's talk about server invites. A server invites you can create an invite like this, in which you could just do well, I'm a three mode, so it's hidden. And you can click copy if you want to do that. Or you can just invite in that group. Or you can search for the different friends in which okay, this is gonna be hard. Oh right, because I'm already here, that's why. But let's say I left the server. Oh, I can't leave the server. <laughs> That's not gonna work. But you can invite people by going up here and put invite, in which you can copy it. And then you can share it here, which looks like this. That's the the invite for a Discord server. For some reason, this is bigger <laughs> than the dis the direct message group is bigger than the Discord server invite. I don't know why. And it'll tell you what chat it's gonna take you to. The logo, then the name of the Discord server, and it says join if you already joined it. So that's how you invite uh, people to a Discord server. Another way would be clicking on the person plus button to create an invite. If you have other people, you can click invite and it'll just give them the invite link already. Unless you want to copy and just give it to them personally, then that's you can do that too. Now let's talk about uh, creating a another text. Now let's say this didn't exist. Oh right, and another thing about this or invite is you can also invite people by clicking this and it'll do the same exact same thing like if I did this with this account. But yeah, so sorry for the sidetrack. But anyways, to create a text channel, a voice channel, you click on the plus button under the category. You can even do it here, create channel, create category. Doing it up here would be creating a channel outside of category. Which you can collapse it. You can't hide the other channels. That's what cat what collapsing would do in this case. So yeah, so let's just put it under the text channels category, and we can just call this. Uh, we'll just call it chat two again. Why not? Voice channels. No, no. With with voice channels, you can have uh, with spaces, or you can use caps as well. Text channel. No, it won't work. It'll just lowercase it. It'll be in dashes. Not sure why that rule, but that's just the way it is. When it also comes to creating a uh, text channels and voice channels, you can also create a new category. Which, if you right click outside, you can create a new category name, category two. And you could put in caps or which basis. A category, well, it basically asks you who can be, who has permission to see this one. Which I haven't showed you the roles yet, so I can show you that at a different time. So now you have another category, which you can move it here or here. That's how you make a new category, in which you can put a bunch of uh, text channels or voice channels beneath it. And you can even edit the category to change its name and what permission it'll be. Which I'll talk about permissions later on. Now let's go to the server settings. In server settings, here's what you have. You have the logo, which you can change the icon by here. You can click over here or upload image. You can even change the name of the server. You can change this region, which I usually get confused on the, how the regions work. And you can even change the, this is the AFK channel, which whoever is away, which only happens if you're on a voice channel, as far as I know, you can send them to a different voice channel. 
and then th this is if you were to specify like say the general channel then this will start working but if you have it on none it'll just fade away but this will tell you how much time that they need to be afk like to do nothing then it'll time them out but yeah this will just remove their channel if they're afk System messages would be something like this, a random message when they, someone joins the server, which an example of a welcome message would be like this person just joined or did they. See, that's an example of them joining. And then there's also this message when someone does a boost to the server, which is a nitro boost, <coughs> which is only for a nitro pew. People who bought Nitro for who bought Discord Nitro, or they just bought um, a Nitro just to boost the server, which that costs money though because you have to pay it by by month, I think. But I won't go too much in depth with that one. So. so you can choose to have them enabled or disable. If and if you were to have them to be enabled, you could say where does it go and what channel. Or you can say you know system messages in which none of these apply, but I just had it on by default, but it's up to you how you want your your Discord server to be. This is to control on um, people who haven't set their notifications settings on your Discord server. This will change their default to whatever it will be. It'll be all messages, or you can make them choose to only get notifications if they're only at mentions. I would say most Discord servers do this one, so People are not spam with messages, depending on how active your Discord server is. But roles, uh, this is where you you make different permissions for people who have a, a certain role. At everyone is the default, it's the default role that everyone has, in which you can change its color, since that's a a role that's given by default by Discord. But let me go over what all the different permissions would be. Like first of all, if you have a, third, a customized role, you can display them separately online, which I'll show you with a different role. And even though it says you cannot mention this role, you really can. You just need to type add everyone. Then you just ping everybody. But mentioning a role would be you mention a specific role. If then you could choose this to be disabled. To say you don't want someone to mention the admin so many times. Like, you just, like, it won't work for them. Mr. will basically, everything here would be enabled for them. You could say, quote, unquote, enabled, which is really what it does. It'd be set to be administrator enabled. The audit log will, I'll talk about what audit, audit logs are, but they have permission to see it. Master would be... They can handle the permissions and change the server's name, or they can even move the the different the regions of the channels, or even categories. I would think, <coughs> but they just match server. Match roles. They match all the permissions of the of the roles. They can even add new roles, edit them, or even delete ones. And you can also match the the match channels would be. They could create new channels, edit or delete existing ones. Kick members. The difference between kick and ban members. Kick members is you just remove them from the server, they can come back in. Ban would be they can come back unless you unban them from the ban list. Create invite would be they can invite people, uh, other people to this Discord server. You could choose to be off you don't want uh, a bunch of strangers coming. But you can see the invites that are created here, but I'll go more in depth in that one later. Change nicknames would be, people can change their own nicknames. And manage nicknames, your, that would be, you could change the nicknames of other people, instead of just yourself. Emojis, that would be this one. Like, you can, ma you can add the emojis, or you can match all the um, custom emojis for the Discord there. 
As for webhooks, um, this will also go the same for webhooks integrations. I have the same thing to say about those. Which is, I'm not sure what those do. I'm not sure what integration and webhooks are really what webhooks, webhooks really is. And until I never touch them, sorry. So anyways, read text channels and see voice channels, they have permission to see them. Send messages, well, to send messages. A send text to speech messages would be the slash TTS command. I would say some discoursers, or probably most of them, don't have this enabled since they don't, you don't want to hear a bot talking because they did the command. Match messages would be you could delete messages or pin messages. Embed links, if I got that right, I think it means you can share links, like a YouTube link, and that's called embedded. But I never fully understand what embedded links was. Attached files, well, we have this disabled. You can't even put pictures either. So it just means you give me the permission to attach any file. We message history, if you have this disabled for the person, they can't see any past messages. Like if they just join a chat, they'll have no messages seen. Like they won't see any messages on the, until uh, someone sends a message there, or they send a message. But once they leave it, they can't even see what they said before, because it, it's gone. Mention add to everyone, add here, and add in the, all the roles. If you disable that, they can't even do any mention. External emojis, if you have it disabled, they can't use emojis from any other discourser. They have to use emojis from either this discourser or the provided Discord ones. Add reaction, while well, I show you what reaction were. If you have it disabled, they cannot add a reaction to a message. And they could... You can give them permission to connect to a voice channel. You give permission to speak. And uh, muting them means that you can mute, you can server mute other people, which I would say that's for an admin thing. Server deafen. Let me tell you what server mute, server deafen is. And what's the difference between regular muting and regular deafening. Server mute means by you just muted somebody. And you cannot unmute your, they cannot unmute themselves unless you remove the muting. The same thing goes for deafen. You, they can't undeafen themselves unless you remove that the deafening since you server deafened them. Move members would be you can move someone from one voice channel to another. You can just drag them to somewhere else. If you have voice activity disabled, they have to be on push to talk, which I don't think I recovered what push to talk was earlier. But push talk would be, you need to push a certain key, which I talked about the key binds earlier when you recorded, about what button you prefer to have for a push to talk. If you push that button that you set it to, then that's how you talk. If you haven't pushed it, you must have it pressed down the whole time in order to speak. If you don't have it pressed down, you can't speak. Voice activity means that you can talk whenever you, you want and it just comes out. Depending on how you sensitive you made your microphone. Priority speaker would be when you push the button to do priority speaking. You you do talk in regular volume and everybody else volumes will be lower so that way you can hear. And that's called priority speaker speaker. I would think this would be disabled in probably most servers because that may cause chaos. And the go live would be like the screenshot we saw earlier, except without the link. Having disabled, they can't use the go live. Now let's talk about admins. So let's say we create a new role called ad admin or administrator. If you give them this role. And if you want to know what this looks like, display role members separately from online. Let's just do that. And give myself that role. See, I have something like this where it says admin one. There's one admin there. And to do the, the nice color stuff, 
let me go back to the roles. And let's just say you can either use one of these colors here or you can change the custom color, which you can move all of this stuff. And you can drag this here, which I give this color. This will put it back to its default. But yeah, then you can give it that red text. But let's say you want a different role, which this one will be called moderator. Let's give it yellow. So with moderator, let's just say they can have permission to kick members. I would say banning iffy because banning means that they can't come back ever. Imagine Nixie, imagine, well, maybe not that one. And of course, they have to manage messages to be moderators. But that'll be about it. Like, that one can have certain permission, and that's how this will work. But let's say you want you create a new role, and let me show you what clear role permission would be. Clear role permission would be everything would be set to to op. But what about if you didn't want that, or you did something by accident? Like you change an option by accident when you're trying to view a, a certain permission. You click reset put it back the way it was supposed to be. Before. When you when you last saved it. Now if you want to delete this role, you can put delete role down here and that's how you get rid of it. And messing with this, this actually matters which one you put because if you have like admin on top, they're like the most you're saying that they're the ones that derive everything. Putting this up here would be, first of all, if you have the display separately, it does affect how they display it. Like, let's say, begin the moderator, and now they're up top. So, I would say they inherit a lot of things. So that's why it actually matters how you do it. And from my experience, that it does it does show which one has what. And do you have to have only one role? No, you can have multiple rows. Roles, but the the one the most top role would be displayed first, and you'll be having this one shown instead. And the way I'm doing this by the roles, I just right click and just get myself the roles. That's what I've been doing it. You can always remove a role by just clicking on the X button here. That's to remove a role. That's what it does. I'll just get myself the role back. Alright, now let's talk about emojis. Now with emojis, these are custom emojis that you can create for your Discord server. It's not really necessary to go too much in depth with this one since it's more of a personalization of the Discord server, but here are still the instructions. Which is, you can add up to 50 custom emojis, this server, but the anime GIF emoji can only be used by members with Discord Nitro. Which it must have, the emoji names must have at least two characters long, and it must contain alphanumeric characters, meaning by must be letters and numbers, and underscores are included. And the emoji must also be under 256 kilobytes in size. So that's how you, and you in order to put the your emoji, you click on the upload emoji and you locate the file. Moderation. Okay. Uh, hold on. All right. I I have to move the stream mode in order for this to work. This actually will, the moderation is to show you 
about how restrictive do you want to, to have players to be do you, how strict do you want to have for players when they join your ser your discord server none means that they can join anyone can just join low means by they must have like a verified email in the discord account medium would be they must also have been been registered on discord for longer than five minutes this would be they must be on your server for longer than 10 minutes and this one they must have a verified phone number which i would say that's too much sorry i'm saying that then this is the automatically this is about how much restrictive you want to scan content like you could scan you can have no scan messages scan only the ones that don't have a role or you can scan everybody and that's basically how this will work and for audit logs uh, this is who, to show who created the roles remove roles give someone a role remove the role from someone ban someone unban someone create a channel remove the channel or even kick someone from the server that's what the odd log shows in there uh, like i said earlier i don't know what this is so i never touched i'm sorry uh for widgets i'm not too sure what witches are but i i think they're third presentations third boost status this is to check the on um, what your status is for the nitro boost that you receive from people but i won't go too much in depth in that one Remember, uh, you can see all the people who are in your discourser. Uh, oh, sorry. There you go. This is for all the ones that you can see in your discourser. But uh, you can change. You can change their their nicknames. You can also kick them, ban them. You can add roles. And you can even trade ownership, transfer ownership, but why would you want to do that? Another thing you can do is thermute them, which I already said what thermuting them was. Another thing you can also do is prune them, but why prune all of your members, but why would you want to do that? I would think it means you get rid of every member, but then how does your Discord server function? Another thing you can do about members, you can search them here. And you can filter out by at everyone, at moderate, at admin, or you just had everyone and you can just search their by name. And as for invites, and this is to you can see all the Discord server invites that you that are created in this Discord server. You can revoke them by pressing the the X button. Or the three dots, or oh, wait a minute, <laughs> sorry. You can push them by the X button, or you can just copy the code, but since I'm in stream mode, it won't show the invite code. But yeah, and you can even see when it expired. Which is by seconds, minutes, and hours, and how many times it's been used, and who did the invite. Now as for the bands, this is to see who you ban from the server. You can always unban them from here. Like for instance, let's say you, like I banned my alt. When you ban them though, I'll go over here now. And you can always revoke the ban from there. <laughs> now to delete a server is to delete your current Discord server, but why would you want to do that?
uh, change your nickname is to change the change your nickname on this Discord server. So that's what it would do. Now let's talk about setting permissions on Discord. Uh, on the chat, the chat. There you go. So when you set permissions, let's say we want this one to be. We'll talk about edit first, and then we'll talk about permissions later. Like you have your channel name and channel topic, but let's say we want to change this to be an announcement. This is the announcement. And now we have a description up here that says the announcements. If we don't have a description, this is what it looks like. It just says announcement. Okay, now you can either do handle the invites here, which no one has created an invite there. What folks? I don't know what that is. Sorry. As for permissions, you can grant a permission to a certain to everyone, in which this is exactly only exactly the same thing as we saw here, or we could say the moderator has permission to do whatever they want except for sending a message but that would be like that this one it should be not sending a message but let me remove this one by the way and we could say as for the admin they do have permission to send a message Then that's how you send it. That's how this will work. And we can move this on top by dragging this up here. Then that's how you would move your channels and stuff. True move a category, you can always delete it, but I would not delete it because it deletes everything underneath it. So let's just move it out of here and then delete this category. And there you go. Do they all categories? Make sure you move all of them out of here first. Sending a permission on a voice channel would be when you edit a channel first, you can edit its name. But a permission is exactly the same thing, except you do have the view channel. Which I haven't really tried what that looks like yet. So let's say you don't want, uh, I don't want my auto account to, I don't want my auto account to actually see the voice channel too. So let's put no, this one, and it's gone for a right. You get, it gives this one mean by they can't see it from at everyone, but you could make, let's just say the admin see the channel, so yes. So that's how the channel works. Now, if you want to do that to a to a to a to a to a text one text version, then you would go to like let's create a new chat called admin chat. And then, as for permissions, we want to be. For every for everyone, no, they can't read it, but admins can. So you create a private chat for you. <coughs> but we create another one called. I create it outside, I need to put it in. 
let's say they can see it, but they can connect. That would give it a lock icon in which they can't click on it. Give it connect option and they can speak. Will allow them to join it? But it says you do not have permission to speak in this channel. So you just mute it. Now if you just edit it and they're in there, then once you disconnect, you can join back. Because they're not allowed to join. So that's what the lock would be. One thing you could do is you right click on a person, you can see their you can mention them, message them, call them. You could you could change their volume from from a normal volume to very low volume or the highest would be 200% like if they're quiet or something you can mute them yourself maybe by it, this is not called sir muting this is just muting just for you sir muting is a different story and I'm sorry about what I said earlier that was not sir mute that was just muting change the nickname on this discourser invite to a discourser move friend blog kick ban and roll and developer mode only copy id that's another thing you could do about how how you can do it on yourself. Right clicking yourself, yeah, this is all you have. But that's something that, that I missed. Sorry about that guys. Man, this is a lengthy tutorial. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and may God bless you all. Oh, you gotta be kidding me.